this talk is about pandas. I gave the title pandas not just for data scientists, because as you all know, pandas is quite common and popular in PyData community. And um, I found out that uh, other um, Python developers either know about it but don't use it, or um, use it but not in production. And uh, from our experience, I learned that it's a powerful tool that could be used also in situations where data science is not uh, what you're doing. So just to be clear, this talk is not for data scientists, and it's not a tutorial. Uh, I included two uh, resources here. Uh, Slides will be available later on, so you can use it. My aim here is to convince Python developer to start using Pandas. That's basically the, the goal here. So about me, these are the major uh, languages and, and fields I worked with uh, in the last 30 years. Uh, in the past six years, it was mostly Python. And uh, in recent years, I work at Bluevine. Bluevine is a fintech company, and one critical component in our system is being able to run risk assessment uh, for potential customers. And you can imagine that uh, for business uh, reasons, obvious business reasons, this process has to be quick and highly reliable. And for that, we have a very talented uh, data science team, and uh, they use Pandas. And part of my role is to support them in um, everything that's related to Python and system architectural decisions, and while doing the, so, I had to learn Pandas. And when I worked on my other non-data science related projects, I found out that uh, I can actually use this knowledge and, and benefit from it. And this is what I'm going to show you here. A programming language can be seen as an interface between a human developer and a machine. Not all of you, but I hope most of you will agree that probably Python is the best general purpose uh, programming language when it comes to the uh, developer side of the interface. But uh, when we talk about the machine side of this interface, it's not that clear. And uh, as you all know, Python has its limitation. And in a way, greatness comes with a price. And uh, if you think of just one example, uh, as we all know Python is highly dynamic. And to enable this uh, uh, dynamic behavior, everything has to be object. So even a simple integer number has to be keep, kept as an, uh, as an object, which of course has a lot of or overhead in terms of memory and CPU. Python provides different uh, ways to cope with these um, performance uh, limitations. One of them is to use specialized Python features. So if, for example, we have a list of numbers and we want to filter them, then we can use the uh, general purpose for loop, which is good for many purposes, but for this specific purpose, we know that list comprehension is probably a better choice uh, uh, of implementation. And not only we get uh, improvement in performance, we're using idiomatic Python, which makes the code clearer, at least for uh, Pythonistas. So in a way, Python enables us to extend this um, optimize specialized features by implementing some of our code in C. Uh, C being a language that is closer to the machine. And uh, many libraries, including some standard libraries in C, Python, and of course NumPy and Pandas are heavily written, mostly written in C. And in that regard, sometimes people see Python as a, as a glue language. You write your uh, up-level code, high-level up-level code, um, in Python, and the implementation itself is actually running in C. So Pandas is based on NumPy, and uh, um, NumPy's uh, basic data structure is the array. Uh, on top of that, Pandas uh, defines series and data frame. And if you're not familiar with Pandas, you can imagine Excel spreadsheet to begin with. I mean, you shouldn't stop there with this image, but it's a good start. And these data structures, um, what makes them uh, uh, performant is the fact, I mean, one of the ways that uh, 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 Pandas and NumPy uh, make them uh, high, highly performant is the fact that there are fixed site in creation and all elements have the same data type. So contrary, for example, of Python lists, we can have a list of different object, uh, Python objects. So here we're talking about uh, uh, the same data types. And of course, NumPy and Pandas provide um, a lot of UFUNCs, as you heard before in, in previous lectures, uh, that actually provide a, a very like, highly optimized uh, implementation of common mathematical and statistical operations. And Pandas is a 
very flexible library. I mean, everything you can do with a DB, with Excel, with our data frame, you can do with the pandas. Some people would say more, of course, and, but we're not getting into this debate. How actually can it improve performance? I mean, okay, so, I mean, most of it is written with C, which, of course, explains a lot, but you have to understand basically how the data structure is, is set up. So, this is a very simplified uh, diagram. You see on the right uh, a typical Python data structure here, a Python list. So we have the object, which refer to uh, an array of, of references. And each reference is, is, is a kind of a pointer to an object, a uh, Python object. And these objects are scattered all over the memory, right? I mean, they are not continuous. And contrary to that, if you look at NumPy array, then you see something that's more similar to C. I mean, you have the the Python uh, uh, object layer, which has a meta that, metadata that, that makes it great with, Pand with, with Python, sorry, but the data itself is kept in a continuous memory, and of course this makes um, memory usage and CPU usage much more uh, efficient. Of course, uh, Pandas is, uh, and, and NumPy is are only two components of our entire ecosystem, and, and this chart only shows a very small part of this uh, ecosystem. And uh, this means that if you learn Pandas and you start using Pandas, uh, eventually you get a lot more tools that you can use for very specific problems that you have to deal with. So I want to now turn to uh, Jupyter um, to have a, a very like a small demonstration of what you can do with Pandas. So Jupyter, um, as formerly was known, uh, IPython Notebook. If you're not familiar with it. Uh, it's basically a front end to Python backends, and this Python backend can run on a remote uh, server on production. In this case, it runs this uh, computer, of course. So basically, what we see here, we see a, a Jupyter notebook, which is a, a collection of cells, and each cell has a, a code in Python. So we start by running um, some common imports in this situation, right? We import pandas and numpy and, and do some basic configuration. And the first thing you probably want to do is load data to the data frame. And pandas provide many methods for loading data. Uh, one of them is to load it from CSV, which is a, a common uh, uh, data um, file. And this one I downloaded from the internet is like a set of uh, products with prices, etc. It's not that interesting. So once the data is loaded, I can very easily view it. And you, as you can see here, so you see here uh, uh, a table with uh, the few first lines and the few last lines. And, and already here you can see a lot of information about your data, right? I mean, we can see that we have uh, almost 1,000 rows and 12 columns. And if you want to get more info, then we can use the uh, info method, which uh, gives us more information about each column. So if you look carefully, you see that we have the latitude and longitude, which are uh, native um, NumPy float 64. Uh, and for some reason, all other columns are marked as objects. And the reason is that uh, uh, these this information is kept as Python object, and usually it means that it's a Python string, I mean, usually with this kind of data. And something that's a bit surprising here is that the price is kept as an object and not as an integer or float or whatever. So let's see, let's clear the data and, and examine it and see what's going on here. So if we did something like this, which is uh, running uh, sum over the column, for some reason, you see we get a very long string, and if you think about it, this is probably a concatenation uh, that's running instead of adding numbers. And, and of course, as I said before, this is a string, and that's why we see it. And if I run this u func, which is contains, and uh, on, on a specific column on price, I get a series of uh, Boolean values. So for each row, I get false or true if this condition uh, is true or not. And if I use the result of this series with the brackets operation, like here, then I actually do filter on the data frame. So what I get is the only row, I mean, all the rows, that for them, this condition was true. And in this case, there's only one row, and you can see clearly there is a comma here. And there's a very simple way to treat this one, I mean, or the entire column by doing this, and I won't go through the too many details here, 
But if after I fix it, you can see that, of course, now it's in 64. And if I run the sum now, then I get the sum. So there are a lot of things you can do with pandas, and, and we're not going even to scratch you know, the beginning of it. But just to show you some things so you have some kind of a taste. So we can do describe, which goes over all the numerical columns and show you some statistical information. Uh, if you have a, a non-numerical value, like a string, and you want to see more information, then you can call describe in the specific column. So in this case, we see that uh, we have a unique four uh, values, and um, uh, the top frequency is for product one, and this is the frequency. We can actually count the frequencies for different values. We can, of course, run you know, this, the usual statistical uh, operations, and these are just two examples. We can run a more complicated filter. So in this case, I want to see prices between 1,200 and 2,500. And Pandas uses for this the uh, bitwise uh, end operator. And because of Python uh, precedence order, we have to use the parenthesis here. Uh, otherwise, it won't work. And when we do that, we get all the rows that uh, have this uh, condition. And of course, we can add a new column by uh, calculating uh, uh, something on, you know, based on an existing column or, or whatever. So we have this new column with discounted price. Uh, we can do things that are a bit more complicated, like group by, and then calculate uh, different statistical functions upon the results, or run describe on the group by and get all the statistical information uh, on these uh, groups. Uh, we can show some graphs, and the most simple ones is like like to show a histograph, sorry, histogram on the uh, numerical uh, columns. We can show it for a specific column and see a bit more information, and we can run whatever we want. When we can draw whatever graph that uh, suits our needs, and so we can do all this sort of operations. And it's like, I mean, if you look at the Pandas API and uh, it's like hundreds, maybe thousands of, of options that you have there. And uh, so eventually, you usually want to keep the data somehow. And pandas provide um, a lot of methods for this as well. So one example is just to save it as JSON. Another example is to save it to uh, uh, any SQL source. So in this case, it's SQLite. It could be any uh, SQL server. So if I do ls, and this is a nice feature of Jupyter, where you can actually run um, terminal commands. Uh, so I see the new, the new files here. I can read the data back, of course. And I can read it from the SQL by running a query. So in this case, I'm, I'm reading only some of the data. And if you see, I get only 155 rows. Uh, and I, Small comment for Django users. So if you're using Django ORM, so there is a, a very handy method that uh, pandas provide, which is from records. And if you use values on the um, value set res uh, results, then uh, you can easily load the data to pandas. And the last thing I want to show you is, uh, is uh, an example for extension. Uh, Jupyter is a quite rich environment, and there are a lot of extensions and a lot of uh, uh, um, projects built on top of it. So this simple, ex not that simple actually, but this nice extension uh, allows you to uh, uh, play with a pivot table. So I can take, for example, a uh, um, price, put it here, and I can take uh, the country, and maybe by city, and I can use different uh, um, statistical function and, and use different um, visualization with charts or whatever. This is very handy when you do data exploration and you want to understand more about the data that you have. So again, this is only a, a quick overview of what you can do with Pandas. Um, and there are a lot of resources uh, uh, out there that you can learn from. So here I ran a very simple test. I, uh, I took uh, 100 million numbers and, and just uh, ran um, very simple functions like sum and filter and, and multiplying uh, by scalar. And you see on the left side without pandas and the right side with pandas. And all, not only that, the results are much faster, in this case around 30 times faster, I think in a way the code with pandas is a bit clearer in a way. Uh, maybe you, get, you have to get used to it, but uh, 
eventually it becomes, I believe, it becomes much clearer. And I want to share with you a um, few examples from um, uh, uh, real use cases we have in production. Uh, so the first one uh, related to a sync process that we have that runs every few minutes. And during this process, we compare hundreds of thousands of values. And so we get data from external API, and we need to compare it with data that we have uh, uh, in our database through Django or RAM. And when we moved uh, this specific code to, uh, uh, to Pandas, to use Pandas, uh, we got results that are 15 times uh, faster. Uh, and not only that, I think the code was, was much cleaner. Um, and and that's, that's, that's impressive, impressive to get 15 times faster, and actually it's also very pragmatic. Uh, but it was nothing compared to what we saw later on when we actually used Pandas in, um, in a place where we have a, a, a very complicated business logic with summaries of aggregated data. Not that complicated, but complicated enough to get results that are almost 2,000 faster with Pandas. Um, and we got much cleaner code. And, and, I, and I have to be clear that we could have taken the non-Pandas code and optimized it, and I'm sure we could have got much better result than we started with. I don't think, I mean, I don't think it would be that faster, I mean, 2,000 faster, but it probably would be much faster. But the code would be almost uh, like unmaintainable, I mean, relative to what we got. So we, got, we took a code and we changed it to use Pandas. We got a simpler code, not, not more complicated code. And that's, that's the thing here. If you decide to use Pandas, then you should learn the Pandas way. Um, sometimes the Pandas way is not the most intuitive one. And, um, if you know how to use Pandas, then you can benefit more from uh, performance improvements. So, for example, you should always prefer UFUNCs, uh, like SUM and MIN and MUNCs, we saw before. Uh, if there is no UFUNC that uh, um, solves the problem you need to solve, then you can use Apply. Uh, you should avoid using iteration over a data frame. I mean, whenever you can use Apply, and usually you can. And still, even if you iterate over a data frame, remember that it's still faster than iterating over a simple Python list or dictionary. To show you what I mean by, by saying don't always follow the most intuitive way, uh, I want to share with you the last example which we had um, also in production, where we had uh, uh, the need to uh, set a category, uh, you see on the left, uh, uh, rows and a category, and we need to set this category based on date ranges. So for this example, the, the question mark here has to be C. And if you go with a straightforward approach, then you use apply and you write a, a callable, a function, a get category, which calculate the category uh, based on the values of the row. And this is straightforward approach because it's, in a way, it, it iterates over uh, the rows and apply the logic to set the category. But it turns out there is a much more efficient way. And if you turn the problem around and you, instead of that, iterate over the date ranges, so now you iterate over 13 um, options. And for each of these options, you set the category for all the rows in the data frame uh, with this condition then you get results that are more than 2,000. I mean, that's what we got, more than 2,000 faster. Uh, so just to explain how faster it is, so we, got, we had this process to take, which, take, uh, which took uh, 61 seconds, and after this change took only 26 milliseconds. If you learn Pandas and you use it in production, that's fine, but you also get uh, uh, a very powerful tool that you can use for data exploration. And data exploration is something that data scientists uh, uh, always do when they see new data. And in our case, I mean, if you have data in production and you want to debug something and you want to understand what's going on, then data, Pandas provide a lot of powerful tools to, doing, to do that. And one of the advantages of using Jupyter and Pandas and all this whole setup is that you can use a single notebook to run the same logic on multiple environments. So you have staging and production and dev, so you don't have to repeat yourself. You can run it in different times. If you're debugging something and you change your code, it's quite handy. You can share the notebook with uh, other team members. You can share all, only the results, if it makes sense. And, uh, and you can actually use the notebook as a starting point for uh, uh, writing your production code. 
To summarize, um, I think you should learn from this. I mean, that's a summary. And uh, you should start using Jupyter if you're not using it already. Uh, it will enable you to explore your data more effectively, um, to optimize your code and make it clear, and to give some examples in context of data analysis, sync processes, reports, exports, and many other situations. And when you use Pandas, uh, remember that changing your point of view can lead to a much more efficient uh, implementation. Okay, so the question was, how, how does it compare uh, with, uh, let's say, code that runs with uh, SQL? So, uh, obviously, if you have a database and you run uh, a query and uh, you get just the data that you need from the database, uh, usually that's a better solution if, if, if that makes sense. Uh, so, in these cases, I mean, it doesn't replace uh, an intelligent uh, SQL query, right? I mean, you should do that as much as you can. Uh, but I think Pandas is more useful when you have situations where SQL doesn't give you the, you know, all you need. I mean, either the query would be too complicated or maybe even like impossible to, to write with SQL. So the question was about uh, the scale, if there are any limitation, if Pandas doesn't scale uh, from a certain point. Uh, we didn't uh, experience that. Um, of course there is. I mean, Pandas is based on the fact that data is loaded to memory, so it has to be limited by memory. Uh, but as you uh, heard in previous lectures, uh, there are solutions for that as well. So if you start using Pandas, then you can use other pieces of the ecosystem to scale up. So that's, that's a plus. Okay, thank you. Thank you.